Good morning. This is K. Pravin Kumar, student professor, Gita Minish. Today, I am going to explain the architecture of 8086 microprocessor. 8086 microprocessor launched in Bennington in 1979. It was the first 16 bit microprocessor. The earlier microprocessor is a 8 bit microprocessor that is 8 bit old. Compared to 8085-8086 microprocessor having major improvements like exhibition speed. 8086 microprocessor is available in the form of 40 pin IC. 8086 microprocessor having 16 data lines, 20 line addresses. Because it is having 20 line address bus, it can address up to 1 mega. That is 2 power 20. Here the 20 is indicates the number of address line. The 2 power 20 equal to 1 mega. The address in capacity of 8086 is 1 mega. Now how a processor is defined? The processor is defined is always depends upon 16 data. Line. It is 8086 is a 16 bit microprocessor. It is defined because it is having 16 data lines. Coming to the architecture of 8086, it is having two independent units that is, bus interfacing unit, second one is exhibition unit. The bus interfacing unit is having different parts, so that is, segment register. That is instruction pointer, address calculator, and instruction key. Coming to exhibition unit is in a general purpose registers and uh, arithmetical logical unit, flag register, and control system. Now we we'll go in detail about the functions of bus interface unit. The bus interface unit it will handles the data and address calculations, address between the processor and memory. So this bus interfacing unit will calculate the address, the physical address that is required to fetch the instructions from the memory. Once it is calculated the physical address of the memory, the instruction will be fetched from the memory and it will be stored in the instruction. So bus interfacing unit will always Calculate the address, physical address of the memory, where the instruction codes are available. From there, it will fetch the instructions and it will be stored in instruction queue. From this instruction queue, each and every instruction will be given to the exhibition unit. Here, the instruction queue is a 6 bytes long, so that it can store 6 bytes instructions. Here, because of this instruction queue, because it is storing 6 bytes of instructions so that it can give each and every instruction to the execution unit. The execution unit will decode the instruction and then it will execute. So that what happens? Whenever the bus interfacing unit is fetching the instruction from the memory, execution unit can do execution of another instruction. So parallelly bus interfacing unit and execution unit will do independent operations so that this particular operation is called as pipelining. So because of this pipelining, because of this instruction queue, the execution speed of the microprocessor is increases. So that the BIU and execution unit operate in parallel independent of each other. So this non overlapped functions, fun operations always we are calling as pipelining. Here we observe here Suppose the instruction cycle of a microprocessor is having two operations, one is fetch, second one is execute. So whenever the bus interfacing unit is fetching an instruction, at that time the execution unit will be fetched. Once the bus interface unit fetch the instruction, the instruction will be given to execution unit to execute. While execution unit is executing the first instruction, the bus interface unit is not doing so that it can fetch another instruction, that is second instruction. So now, after execution of first instruction by the execution unit, it can go for execution of second instruction 
while execution of second instruction by the execution unit this interfacing can fetch third instruction so like this the execution unit is executing the previous instruction the bus interface unit can fetch another instruction so this is parallel processing this particular parallel operations of these two bi and execution unit is called as pipelining process as i told the functions of execution unit it decode the instruction it will take each and every instruction from the queue then it will decode that instruction then it will execute the instruction so now if you observe the general purpose register is available in the execution unit it is having four 16 bit register ax bx cx and dx these are called as 16 bit general purpose registers so these are the registers are used for by the execution unit to store the data temporarily while it is doing any calculation is it these four registers not only called as general purpose register we can also called as special purpose register why because each and every register is having its own specific operation so ax you can use as a individual 8 bit registers as ah and al and bx also bh bl cx also cx cl dx also dh bl like this you can use as one 16 bit register or you can use as two 8 bit registers this is higher order 8 bit of ax this is lower order 8 bit of a the special function of this ax register is called as accumulator so that it is used by the arithmetical logic unit so that what happen one of the data should be available in this accumulator for every each and every logical and arithmetic operations similarly the bx register you can use as a memory pointer either in data segment or other addressing mode the cx register you can use as a counter register in some loop instruction whenever we are having some loop instruction some special loop instruction in that case this particular cx register can be used as a counter register the dx register is always used for dividing and multiplication operation so that is whenever you are doing a 16 bit 16 bit multiplication the result may be a 32 bit the 8086 microprocessor doesn't have 32 bit register so that this higher order 16 bit of the result will be stored in dx register automatically then coming to another register those are available in execution unit the stack pointer base pointer and source index and destination index the source index and destination index registers these are used for uh, special cases that is string operations the stack pointer will be used by the stack and then base pointer generally used for to store the address of the any base there are four segment registers available here the total one megabyte of memory capacity will be divided into different segments here the C segment register is 16 bit long so that the 2 power 16 or 64 KB address having in available in each and every segment. So you are having different four segments here. So that is one is core segment, data segment, stack segment and extra segment. So because of the segmentation what happened individually each and every segment is having its own specification. The core segment register will store the, the base address, the starting address of the corresponding core segment and the data segment register will store the base address of the data segment and the stack segment register will store the, the data segment of that is the base address of stack and then extra segment will store the, the starting address of the extra segment. Extra segment is also called as the second data segment. So now each and every segment is having a 16 bit address base address but the effective address the physical address that is uh, available with the memory the address of the memory is always a 20 bit so but we are having a 16 bit so from this 16 bit base address we have to calculate 20 bit physical address here what you are doing you are shifting the base address towards the left side by 4 bit position then you are adding instruction pointer to that 16 bit offset address then always you will get 20 bit physical address so this is the exercise you can take as calculation of the 20 bit addressing that is physical addressing. So the then coming to this the flags it is having a flag register. So this flag register is having two different groups here. 
one is conditional flag second one is machine control flag so this flag is usually is also called as program status one so it is a 16 bit register it is having 16 bit out of 16 bit is having only nine flags so here so this is called as carry flag this is called as parity flag this is called as auxiliary carry flag this is zero flag this is sign flag this is strap flag this is interrupt flag this is direction flag this is overflow flag out of this some flags are conditional flags so these conditional flags is always affect the conditions of the if you indicate the condition of the execution unit then after execution of any any operation logical and oper logical and arithmetic operation the condition of that the result of that will be stored in out of these one conditional flag the machine control flag the name itself is indicating it will control the operation of the process so this is about the instruction of uh, that is introduction of about the architecture of 8086 microprocessor in the next section we will go in detail about each and every flag and then we we'll go for minimum mode and maximum modes of 8086 thank you